All right, so we're going to do problem two out of chapter one of Introduction to Analysis by Rosenlich. This is more set theory. So uh, in, in this problem, we're assuming A is a subset of the set S. We want to show that, and then we have a bunch of different statements. So let's do the first one, A. We want to show uh, the complement of the complement of A is equal to S. So, uh, or is equal to A. So, what is the complement of the complement of A? Well, the complement of, it, so it, if we think of this as a, a Venn diagram, if this is like S, A is a subset, then the, com so if this is A, then the complement of A is just this. So this would be like the complement of A. And the complement of the complement of A would be everything that's not this blue, which is exactly A. So the way you can kind of write this down is the complement of the complement of A. This is the set of the elements of X that are in S, such that X is not an element of the complement of A. But so we want to show that this is A. So l let's see how, how could we write the complement of A. So we have we, we have that the complement of A is the set of x that are in S such that x is not in A. Thus, so 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 the entire idea is if x is not in the complement of A, but it's in S, then uh, X not being in the complement of A is just going to be A. And uh, so, so, so that's kind of the entire idea. If you want to do a subset argument, uh, so if you want to show that this is a subset of A, you could say uh, let X in the complement of the complement of A. So um, x is in S and x is not in the complement of A. And since x is not in the complement of A, so since x is not in the complement of A, but x is in S, so that this implies that x is in A. So that gives you this inclusion. And then you could also go ahead and do the other inclusion by saying if x is in A, then x is going to be in S. And we also want to show that, and we, we want to show that x is not in the complement of A. But uh, x is not in the complement of A because since x is in A, and we know that the complement of A is just the set of x that are not in A, then by definition, x is not in the complement of A. So, uh, so x is in the complement of the complement of A. So that's part A. Part B. So we want to show A union A is A intersect A is A union the empty set, which is A. And we'll just show each of these is equal to A. So A union A, this is the set of X such that X is in A or X is in A. But this is just equal to the set of X such that X is in A, but that's just equal to A. And here I probably sh probably could say the set of x that are that's in the set S if we want to be more formal with set builder notation. Uh, for the intersect, this is the set of x and S where x is in A and x is in A. Well, if x is in A, then clear if this is just going to be the set of X in S where X is in A 
and this is A. Because if you're in A and A, you're just in A. So that's that equality, A union the empty set. So this is the set of X and S, where you have to either be in A, or X is in the empty set. Well, the empty set's the set containing no elements, so X can't be in the empty set. So this is just equal to the set of X and S, such that X has to be in A. So that's just equal to A. And so that gives these three equalities. Everything's equal to A. So C, uh, maybe I'll get a new sheet of paper. So for C, if we want to show that A intersect the empty set is equal to the empty set, so this is one of those things that's vacuously true. So, uh, yeah, so th the idea is if X is in A intersect the empty set, so X is in A and X is in the empty set. But the empty set's the empty set and there's no elements in it, so so no such x exists. So uh, the the idea is x intersect the empty set has to be empty. And the the other so this kind this kind of shows this inclusion, and the other inclusions vacuously true because the empty set's uh, always a subset of every set. So finally for the last one. So if we're taking Cartesian product, remember this is the set of pairs A comma B such that A is in A and B would have to be in the empty set. Well, since there is no element B in the empty set, there can't be an element in here, so this just has to be the empty set. And so that's how that goes. Uh, because since there is no element B, there are no ordered pairs in the Cartesian product, so this set has to be empty. And so that's how you do these problems. Thanks for watching.